so you, you, you watched the video of uh, silicone rubber over there and it's a particular type of soft material and uh, so it's characteristic changes as you uh, work at it at high speeds versus low speeds and those speeds don't have to be too much um, like very very high speed they can be uh, in the realm of uh, observation by human eye and so if you try to model them then uh, it's not it's a time dependent relationship so it's not like you apply a certain force and it will have a certain displacement like Hooke's law but it is more complex where you have to consider how fast you apply the force and when you relieve the force when did you relieve the force so these uh, additional parameters if you try to include them in a simple way then we call them viscoelastic models but even viscoelastic models they do not um, completely describe most materials and they are only an approximation to what is actually observed so you know you can refine the mo model further and further um, and at a point the model becomes so complicated that you know uh, and then there is no added benefit to adding more parameters to the model because it would then be hard to measure those parameters or to define them so every time you work with this you have to uh, do some experiments so results whatever the results you get from these models you cannot directly um, usually you cannot directly apply them or assume that they're true um, and uh, you have to do careful experiments to um, see how much error you are at by using this model or whether uh, in a particular circumstance um, or particular setup this model applies or not and uh, there are a lot of experimental methods that's one of the improvements that has happened since the uh, you know even the last decade for example a few years back uh, the Nobel, Nobel Prize was uh, awarded to microscopy where uh, you could uh, measure the dynamics of uh, things going on inside cells. So um, many of these developments are happening and the experimental methods are improving over time and these um, once they are automated then uh, you can measure things as they are changing so if you previously if you were a scientist and you had to write down your measurements then you couldn't write them down fast enough so you only wrote certain values from there but now if you have a data acquisition system and the computer takes the measurement and you just write the uh, program to collect that data then you suddenly have a lot of data to try to fit that model to. So the textbook discusses many uh, experimental measurement methods. I will not go into all of them because uh, you know, in the interest of time, I'll try to focus on one or two, but go into a little bit of detail into one or two and not try to cover the whole spectrum because you know, new methods are developed all the time So one of the models uh, that's often discussed is uh, includes a spring and a dashpot. So dashpot is something like uh, if you have a door with a spring and if you release it, then the door doesn't slam on you. So there is a damper uh, on the door or it could be like a damper on a vehicle. So if the vehicle is going over a road then it doesn't shake too much so they might have some dampers over there so sometimes it's called a damper sometimes it's called a dash spot now uh, consider this setup i'll try to be more mathematical now because this is an engineering course and uh, you know we could do more 
anatomical descriptions or be more descriptive, but I'll try to be a little bit more uh, mathematical so that uh, you can catch up on those skills. So let's say there is a strong rigid ceiling and you're hanging a mass from the ceiling using a spring and a dash spot. Then the spring, the force that the spring applies to the mass is proportional to how much the spring has deviated from its equilibrium position. So the spring has a natural length and if you pull it then it will try to pull you in the opposite direction and if you push it then it will try to push back in the opposite direction. So you can consider that as a negative but as you, uh, you might see you know you have to be very careful on these signs and then in each situation might be different. It's, it's, it could be just a convention whether if you're looking at the spring itself then the sign could be reversed but right now you're looking at the mass attached to the spring so uh, if we look at the axis such that um, the origin is currently where the spring is balanced it, it, it doesn't apply any force at that origin and the direction pointing up is positive x and direction pointing down is negative x now the force due to gravity is always uh, down so because um, because we've taken up as the positive direction uh, the force due to gravity is negative now if you look at uh, what happens to the spring if the mass is moved up if the mass is moved up that is x is positive then the force due to the spring tries to push it down so it's negative if the mass is moved down that is x is negative then the force of the spring tries to pull it up uh, so whatever the direction the mass moves in x the force at the spring is opposite to that so um, you can uh, put the negative sign in this particular setup so each setup you have to decide whether this these equations are true or not so you can't just um, you know put the sign negative most of the time you have to think about it a little bit to decide what the correct sign is and that could be quite tricky so I what what I usually do is I try to look at some numerical examples for example if x was 0 0.1 or minus 0 0.1 so in the case of the dash spot now this is a interesting element where uh, instead of the force being linear to the position the force is linear to the velocity so you saw in silicone that if you pushed it very fast then it pushed back or didn't change and um, if you pushed it slowly then it gave way so if your velocity is low then the force it pushes it back with is very small or if you push it infinitesimally slowly then it won't give you any resistance to a certain extent so this is again so you can imagine that the silicone will not give way forever but um, so so these models are approximations like I mentioned in the last slide and so if the velocity is such that if your uh, object is moving up then the damper will try to resist that motion and push down and if you're moving down then the damper will try to resist that motion also and it will pull up so again the uh, uh, constant of proportionality is negative so if you join the two in parallel then uh, what can you say about the system can you write an equation so i i did the parallel case first because uh, it, in this particular situation it's sometimes easier to 
handle because both these displacements are the same. Uh, the book discusses a situation where they are in series and there is another spring in parallel and it calls it the Kelvin model and uh, you know, that model is used a lot uh, in biomechanics and other uh, viscoelastic materials as a starting point. But um, so for simplicity, I'm using this um, uh, simplified model. So if you had taken some uh, statics or dynamics courses from physics or uh, some engineering 101, uh, then you might have heard of the term, term free body diagram. So in a free body diagram, you look at, you know, you isolate a part of a system and look at all the forces uh, that are applied to this particular part. So let's say this mass, let's say this mass is rigid and it won't change its shape. So the only thing that's changing shape over here is the spring and that spot. The string, this uh, ceiling is also rigid and it doesn't change shape. Um, and in fact, it doesn't move also. Um, it could change a little bit, it could bend a little bit in actual, if you look at the actual uh, ceiling, it will bend a little bit, but that bending will be so small that you can ignore it. So, you know, many engineers are comfortable with working with such materials. While, for example, if you use a tree trunk that is not very, uh, wide or it's a thin it's the smaller younger tree trunk then as you pull on it it will bend and once it bends then the calculation becomes difficult so even if uh, even if it might be easy to even if it can hold that load it's difficult to prove that it will not break over time so engineering materials traditionally have been more of the rigid type except where absolutely necessary for example in sealing uh, it's difficult to do without some kind of um, rubber like material 